ultimately that led to you relocating to the complete other side of the country in Sydney to take up a role with Jaggards, which led to Mo- Monetarium. Yeah. Give me yep. a bit of an overview as to what, what that was all about. I met Robert Jaggard when he was in Perth on the way to, I think he was coming back from South Africa. Um, so he uh, had a lot of clients in South Africa that were interested in buying rare Australian coins as a way of uh, diversifying their wealth in South Africa. The RAND was depreciating in value, so Robert would sell them rare coins and uh, that divers- diversified their portfolio. So he was coming back through Perth, had a meeting at the Mint uh, with... Um, one of my bosses regarding distribution of Perth Mint products in Sydney. And then we met, started chatting. He said that he wanted to uh, offer me a job. I didn't think anything of it. And sure enough, he rang uh, two weeks later and said, how about you come to Sydney for the weekend? Um, So then, yeah, I worked worked with him for probably 18 months, two years. Uh, That was a fantastic spot on the corner of uh, Bridge and Pitt Streets in Sydney CBD. I think it's now a bar. Um, so I, I, that was a baptism of fire, baptism of fire, moving from an area where I had some knowledge in terms of bullion and Perth Mint numismatic products to going into a product range that I had zero knowledge in. So I started writing down, you know, I really started to devour information and that's where I, I started to build my library and learn and write. So, so I moved to uh, Monetarium uh, from there, and that was a really uh, fantastic time to be joining uh, what I'd say is a mid-sized numismatic business in Australia. We had, I think, eight or ten staff, uh, and some real heavy hitters. You know, the guys that I work with, uh, Jeff Dick, Tony Richardson, Barry Windsor, Steve Nugent, um, you know, these guys had been in the industry for a long time. That was... It was great to be in an environment where we delivered real value to our customers and I got to learn a lot and uh, we handled some really fantastic stuff. And it was during your time there that you published your first your first book on numismatics? Is, is that correct? The yeah, Colonial so Coinage of Australia? Both of the books that I've written... Yeah, both of the books that I, got, that I wrote were published in 2005. Um, so The Coinage of Colonial Australia, which was published by the uh, Powerhouse Museum, I don't think... Yeah, I don't have a copy. That sort of grew out of the notes that I used to write. I figured, where I'm going? Okay, I'm going to be a rare coin dealer now. Um, uh, burn the return ticket to Perth. Let's get stuck into this and work out uh, our our way through this, so that I can sell stuff. So I used to write down notes on the cartwheel penny and the um, the 1787 shilling, and then somebody would say, "Oh, can I have a copy of that?" And it grew into magazine articles for the cab magazine and then that all got strung together for a book uh the perth mint um australia sovereigns that was published i think it was probably november 2005 um and that was to celebrate 150 years of the sydney mint being established i know the first sydney sovereign it was 150 years since the 1855 sydney sovereign um So that was written based on the articles that I'd put together for the cab magazine. Um, And then I think we wrote, so that accounted for half the book and then the other half uh, was written in the space of about two weeks, um, which was burning the midnight oil.